This video will illustrate the technique of stabilizing the cranial cruciate deficient stifle joint with the Arthrex Sutra Anchor System. A craniolateral incision is made beginning 4 cm proximal to the patella, extending distally 4 cm below the tibial crest. The subcutaneous tissue is incised along the same line exposed in the tibial crest, the border of the patella tendon, and the patella. An incision is made through the fascia lata adjacent to the lateral border of the patella tendon. Scissors are used to create a tunnel proximally beneath the fascia lata and superficial to the fibrous joint capsule. The scissors are used to incise the fascia lata. The incision is carried distally to the level of the tibial plateau. At the joint line, the scissors are used to create a tunnel directed cranial to caudal extending to the fibular head. The fascia lata is incised along this line. The triangular section of fascia is then undermined and reflected caudally. A lateral peripatellar arthrotomy is made. The incision is carried proximally along the border of the vastus lateralis. The patella is displaced medially and fat paddock size to expose the internal structures of the stifle joint. The cranial and caudal cruciate ligaments are inspected. In this cadaver specimen, the cranial cruciate ligament is excised. The lateral meniscus is thoroughly probed to inspect for tears. The medial meniscus is then thoroughly probed to identify meniscal tears. A medial meniscal release is performed at the caudal meniscal tibial ligament. The fibrous joint capsule is closed and the fascia lata reflected. Once the fascia lata is reflected, identification of the distal pole of the lateral propeller is undertaken. A one centimeter incision is made through the joint capsule at the distal pole of the fibella to expose the caudal femoral condyle. A .062 K wire is used to pre-drill a hole to facilitate insertion of the suture anchor. The drill hole is made caudally in the lateral femoral condyle at the level of the distal pole of the fibella. The anchor is advanced into the drill hole to a point where the circumferential laser line is flush with the surface of the bone. The longitudinal laser line is positioned such that it is directed toward the tibial insertion site of the suture. The suture is released from the handle and the handle pulled off the anchor. The bony protuberance caudal to the sulcus of the long digital extensor tendon is located. A vertical incision is made over the sulcus to expose the tendon and floor of the sulcus. A .062 K wire is inserted 3 mm caudal to the bony protuberance and directed to pass beneath the sulcus. The K wire will exit through the medial cortex of the proximal tibia. A nitinol suture passer 
is placed through the drill hole. 0.062K wire is used to make a second drill hole. The entry point for the K wire is the most caudal and proximal area of the sulcus. The K wire exits through the medial cortex. A nitinol suture passer is placed through this drill hole such that the loop remains lateral. A free end of the suture is placed through the loop and pulled through the drill hole to exit medially. The free end of the suture is then placed through the medial loop and pulled through the drill hole to exit laterally. A surgeon throw is placed, the suture tightened, and stability examined. When stability is achieved, that is 2 to 3 millimeters of cranial caudal movement, the knot is secured with an additional four reverse half hitch ties. Stability and range of motion are examined.